Hi, this is Helen Keat, the Keat team at Keller Williams Realty Landmark here in Queens, New York City. And I always like to interview some of our professionals, our trusted professionals that we work with, and let you see an insight into their business and why we've used them over the years. So today we have Marcus O'Toole from Kana Elder Law Firm. And we're going to talk a little bit about estate planning. I'm going to just read you a brief little overview on Marcus. It could go on much longer and he'll tell you any additional. But uh, Marcus is a partner at Kana Elder Law and concentrates his practice in the area of estate and, and trust. Oh, I'm sorry, estate and asset protection planning, trust and estate administration, probate, tax planning, business succession planning, and estate litigation. And he also advises high net worth clients regarding sophisticated estate and tax planning. So I'm going to let you take it, Marcos, and just tell us <laughs> what I've missed and what you can add, and then we'll go into some specific questions here. Oh, it's a, it's a great summary. I mean, uh, our, our practice is really focused on uh, seniors and families, you know, really helping them plan for their future, protect what's important to them, whether that's estate planning or Medicaid, asset protection, estate administration, all those kind of things that you know, are really important to everyone, regardless of their age or need, but with a real special focus on seniors. And that's what the, the elder law portion, is they have their own special needs uh, when it comes to estate planning. That's great. I'm particularly interested. I'm a, uh, a certified senior advisor and I have my 50 plus lifestyle moves program. So that's why we like to bring in our trusted professionals because we work as a team to really provide some of the solutions for our individuals and families. Um, after COVID or during COVID, I assume you saw things that happened as a result of not planning. Uh, people would come to you probably with some sort of emergency or difficult situation. Was that true there? Yes, certainly. And, and a lot of it has to do with, you know, people didn't really have a plan in place so that if an emergency came, you know, they didn't really have their documents in place, their ducks in a row, so to speak, so that someone could come in and take care of these things for them. So among the, the most basic estate planning documents, regardless of whether you're 25 or 85, is having a power of attorney and a healthcare proxy. So a power of attorney is a document that names someone to be able to handle finances on your behalf, um, whether that's paying bills or selling a house or anything in between. And a healthcare proxy is someone to make medical decisions for you if you were incapacitated. And whether that's, you know, because someone got sick with COVID or, you know, we had situations where seniors were stuck at home but needed to do banking and they weren't really set up for online banking because they like to go in person, but it was dangerous or difficult to go in person. And so if they had a power of attorney, their agent, maybe their child or something like that, could go and take care of that for them. So it really emphasized how important having planning documents in place for decision makers, if you couldn't take care of it for whatever reason, you know, sick, couldn't leave the house, incapacitated, whatever, just really emphasize the importance of having those in place and having them updated and current. Wow. And you just pointed something out because you said it's important from 25 to whatever, 80 to do the right docs. We always worry about wills and, you know, a lot of people, you know, can say, I'm not going to worry about that because I'm not going to die. And wills are one thing, but the power of attorney, certainly at any age and earlier uh, than they think should be done, right? And health proxies, oh my goodness. Right. I mean, you, know, you never know when somebody could get sick or be in an accident. I mean, you watch the news and dangerous roads or here you never know what's going to happen and with covid people got sick they were in the hospital and so again regardless of your age and your you know financial situation you always got to have someone in place and you don't want to leave it up to default or guardianship or anything like that you want to be able to pick who you uh, is going to make decisions for you and you have to have documents in place to do that so what would you say are the several most important for planning so the power of attorney and healthcare proxy are the first two. And then uh, something called the living will, which talks about end of life treatment wishes. You know, if you're in a terminal condition, would you want continuing treatment or not? You can really put together your wishes. And then the fourth core document is the last will and testament, 
which talks about your wishes as far as after you pass away, who's going to inherit your assets uh, and it, you know, what percentages and arrangements and who's going to be in charge, who's your executor, who's going to make sure you know, your funeral is taken care of, your taxes are filed, and then distribute everything as you've directed. So those are, those are your core planning documents. How often do you think they should be reviewed for changes? What do you think, sir? Well, every time there's a major life change, marriage, divorce, additional children, a health crisis, uh, if, if you don't have one of those, then it's like every five years, at least take a look at it to see if, uh, you know, maybe my kids are older, maybe I don't need my, you know, they don't need guardians, maybe they could be agents instead of my siblings or, or, or whatever, things change over time. Um, but, you know, every five or so years is a good ballpark to at least take a look and say, all right, do I still want it? this person in charge? Do I still want to leave my assets this way? Just check and see if you need to change it. Sounds like, sounds like a plan. That's right. Um, what about seniors if they're trying to protect their, say, their house from uh, long-term care uh, issues? What, do you, what goes on with that? So that's really important. I mean, as people get older, they're concerned about, you know, what if I got sick and needed long-term care, whether that's a live-in aid or a nursing home or assisted living or, or things like that, what, what happens? Because that's can be very expensive. I mean, you know, uh, average nursing home on Long Island is, you know, 13,000 a month. And, you know, people work their whole lives to, you know, build up some, their, you know, they have a house, they have some savings, uh, and they want to leave it to their kids and, and be able to use it for themselves. And it would, it would be tough to see it be, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars gone because of a healthcare crisis. So one of the things we do is we help people you know, protect their assets so that if they had that need for care in the future, you know, it would be shielded, all right? And they would be able to you know, go on to, to apply for Medicaid to have the cost of the care covered. And, but in order to do that, you, know, you have to plan for it. It's not automatic if you have assets. I mean, most people uh, on Long Island if they own their home, it's probably their largest asset. I mean, your average person, may, people have varying situations. And, you know, Long Island, real estate prices keep going up. So that can be a very substantial asset, you know, and you don't want to have to lose it. So you really, you have to, you have to plan for it. You have to set up the, a trust, you know, put it in the trust. You have to wait for the look back period. You know, there's, there's things you need to really make sure you're looking at, you know, when you're, you know, around retirement age and up, to make sure that you're planning in advance of, of needing the care. Interesting. And tell me a little bit about trust. Um, does everyone need one? Um, the difference between revocable and irrevocable? Uh, sure. I, I mean, I would say most seniors should strongly consider a trust, uh, particularly an irrevocable trust. And that's tying back to the asset protection we just talked about, because the way it works is this. When someone wants to protect their house from that long-term care needs or protect any other assets, it has to be in an irrevocable trust. And the difference between that and a revocable trust is that a revocable trust is one that you, as the person that create the trust, can change whenever you want, could take it back, can do whatever you want at any time. Well, if you had unlimited access to it, it's still considered yours and wouldn't be protected. So you have to put it in an irrevocable trust that you're not giving up all control, right? It's just not officially in your name anymore. You're still living in the house. You're still, nobody can sell it without your consent. Nobody can just take all your money. It doesn't work like that, but it has to be in this irrevocable trust. And the primary difference is if you needed to undo the trust, if you needed to take it back, you would need the consent of the beneficiaries. That's what makes it irrevocable enough for mm -hmm for Medicaid planning purposes. And so, you know, that's what a senior really needs if they're looking to protect their assets. For a younger folk, uh, you know, having a revocable trust is a nice planning tool to help avoid probate and just make administering their estate smoother if you're younger. But if you're a senior and you have a house and a modest amount of assets and you're looking to protect your assets, you really wanna go with the irrevocable trust so you get that asset protection in addition, you usually also avoid probate, but you're really looking at that asset protection. And you have to do it, you know, in advance. I mean, there's a five-year look-back period, you know, for, for nursing home care. So 
you know, you want to make sure you're doing it while you're healthy before you need the care. People will often say, hey, Marcus, when do I need to worry about setting up a trust? I say, well, you know, I don't have a crystal ball as to when people are going to need care. But, you know, you look at your friends, you look at your neighbors, and people in their 70s sometimes start to need care. Maybe you start with home care, but, you know, people, you know, might need care. You never know. So it's all right, well, what's five years before that? Well, that's 65, right? So retirement age and up is, is when really um, people need to start considering an irrevocable trust um, rather than a revocable trust. Interesting. I was in, I've run across it uh, through my, uh, my work here. It's called the 70-40 conversation. So it's good to have it with your families when the parents are in their 70s, the children are in their 40s hopefully before there's any kind of crisis because you don't want these decisions made in a, you know, in a frenzied situation. So to really have those conversations, how you'd like things handled, even end of life issues. So yeah, I, I can yeah. see planning. Is who's in charge, who's going to make decisions. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is a perfect time to think about it. 70, 40. I mean, 70 is, is when you're retiring, you're just thinking about, you know, what's uh, getting older, who makes decisions for me, who's going to help out you know, am I, are my assets protected? If I pass away, who's going to inherit? And I guess when you're 40, it's like, one, how do I retire? Two, if something happened to me now, who's taking care of my kids? And, you know, what happens? It's, it's a slightly different conversation, but it's very important to have at, at those ages. Boy, uh, what is the job of an executor or, or agent? You know? So really executors and agents are people that make decisions for someone else. Right. So an executor is someone that you name in your will. And it's kind of like a trustee who, after you pass away, handles your estate. Right. So they you know, make sure your funeral is taken care of, make sure your expenses are paid, your taxes are filed. And then they look at your will and they say, OK, I got to maybe I need to sell the house. Right. Usually if a parent passes away, children have their own home. You know, they, they want to sell the house. So the executor, you know, I speak with a real estate agent, they make sure it's listed for sale, get it cleaned out, and then they sell it to the, to the highest bidder, right? That's the goal here. You try to get the most, and then you distribute everything as the will directs. So an executor is someone that, that, manage, that manages that process and that's really in charge. An agent is a little bit different, but the concept is the same, right? They're managing something for someone else, but that person is still alive. Right. So an agent comes in either under a power of attorney or a healthcare proxy to handle the affairs of someone who's living, but maybe can't handle it for themselves. Maybe they're sick or they're just, it's really difficult for them. Right. So they handle banking. They make sure a person's taxes are filed. This is a power of attorney agent. Uh, they, you know, pay bills. They manage the investments or talk with the financial advisor. If they needed to sell a house, they could sell a house uh, on the, medical side, they make medical decisions. So an agent steps in, you know, to make decisions for someone who's alive, but needs help for things. And an executor would take over after the person passes away to administer their estate. Interesting. Now, there's so many people, there's certain sources, certainly online that say you can download your own will and create your own docs and all that sort of thing. I'm sure there's they're missing out on a lot of guidance and information. You tell me, I'm, you're, I'm just learning so much from talking to you here. That's true. You have to be very careful, you know, with trying to uh, estate plan yourself online. I mean, some things, uh, you know, look, for if you have a life insurance policy or a 401k, you want to make sure you have beneficiaries on the account. You can go online to the financial institution, make sure that the, the, you have the people's names and what have you. But something like a power of attorney or a will, you really don't want to do online for a number of reasons. One, a lot of these places are, it's really national and it's not really adapted in particular. And these documents, a power of attorney and a will, they go into effect or they're used when you're either deceased or incapacitated. And at that point, they can't be fixed. So if they're done incorrectly, it's too late, right? You can't go back and fix it. I had someone... Uh, who came to me uh, after their parent passed away, the mother passed away, and they needed me to probate the will. Uh, and they had done it themselves uh, online. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember the, the company that they did it for. And they didn't have the right witness affidavits. And they had gotten it signed at a UPS store. 
So, so we had to go, tra- the witnesses were two employees. So we had to go track down the employees. Yes, they were right? still there, right? Right, well, and one of them didn't want to be tracked down because uh, he had had some legal trouble personally. And so we had to subpoena him. They spent many, many thousands of dollars trying to fix it after the person passed away, where it would have cost a lot less than that to just have a will done properly by a lawyer. And same thing with a power of attorney. I mean, they're very technical. You know, if you don't have it done the right way, if you don't have all the, the full powers, the basic power of attorney usually isn't enough for, you know, Medicaid planning and things like that. And, and you could be stuck having to go to guardianship, which costs many, many thousands of dollars. It's just, it's really not, it's like penny wise, pound foolish to just to try to do estate planning on the internet. It just really turns out poorly. You need to have the right questions asked by a professional like yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. You have the right questions. Do I have the right people? Because it's not just like you don't kind of mean I just you know pop out some documents, just fill in a name, and here's here's your will. It's the advice. It's who should be in charge. What's the difference between having one or two people? Is it better to have two people? Can you have two? How about three? You know, if I'm leaving an inheritance, should I leave it to them directly? Do they need someone watching it over for them? Or do they have, are there special needs children? Are, are there children who can't handle money or marriage? Like there's, there's all sorts of things that go into a will that you might not think about unless you've spoken to a, an experienced lawyer. Well, I can see that. In fact, I've seen them come to me, you know, as they're trying to sell the house. Now there's, well, I guess the largest was a group of 11. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Everybody knew was appointed an executor, administrator, and so they were all in a free for all here with a lot of conversation going on. So, yes. No, yeah. Yeah. I would it's say really um, worth sitting down, uh, meeting with your elder law attorney, and going through all the advice and guidance. Oh my goodness! You know, I would say same with buying a house. These are some of your largest transactions. You know, it's not a transaction created well, but uh, the whole process is part of your life and your planning. So you don't want to let it just go by the wayside with, you know, somebody with inexperience. So. It's, it's, it's really important, you know, that for some, for major things, you want to rely on a professional. I mean, it's like trying to sell a house on your own. You know, you, you don't really know what you don't know. Yes. Right. You know, it's not just like, all right, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to Google some, my neighbors that they sold it for. I'm going to put it up on the market. It doesn't really work that way. There, there are so many things you don't think about, you know, when, when clients come to me and they say, all right, yeah. my mom passed away. I'm going to be the executor. What do I do? And I say, well, you want to you know, list the house for sale. You want to go to an experienced uh, agent who can put it up for you and get the best price possible in the, in the shortest amount of time, right? You're not looking to have it on the market for a year, if, uh, hopefully, and be paying all the expenses. And you really need the expert to maximize your value there uh, to make sure that, that that's all taken care of. And that's really just a, you know, in our modern society, you know, you can't know everything, right? Despite, you know, you could go on YouTube and figure out how to, you know, cook a steak, but trying to sell a house or write a will, it's a little dangerous. You really want to rely on the professionals there. I always say it's the uh, problem solving. People have no idea, you know what I mean? In both our industries, you know, there's a lot of issues and they need to be dealt with and they're important. You have every one of them are important issues to your family for your planning. And uh, you need that. Yeah, it's so like, it's, it's, they, they say, oh, oh, I never know, you know, mom never got a CEO for the deck they added on or whatever. And if you don't have a, a real estate professional helping you need to, that knows to look at those things and knows what the rules are and how to put you in touch with the right people, you know, you're, you're uh, gonna be off the deep end there. So absolutely, and that's why I have my own real estate team but I have my professional team of experts and professionals right. who I know our top of the line and here to guide you just like yourselves of course um any topic anything you want to add here marcus i would say that you know this time of year you know i i we just put out you know a blog post about like spring cleaning and things like that it's just a good opportunity to kind of assess your personal planning situation right you know the winter's coming out it's nice and sunny out um and you know that you know, you've got the right people in place. Has there been any major life changes? You know, has anything gone on that might make you want to look at things and just make sure you have a plan in place? I mean, not having a plan is a choice and it's usually a poor one, 
So, you know, you want to make sure you have uh, a plan in place and that it's current, that you've had it looked at. Has there been any changes in your life, changes in assets, changes in the law? And just have it looked at and make sure that it's right for you. And that, you know, the, the most important part of a plan is that what happens is what you want to happen. The right people in charge, the right people inherit. You want to make sure that your wishes are followed and you need a, a plan in place to do that. You mentioned something right there. I think a lot of people don't realize having no plan puts things into gear to go to the people who you might not have wanted, right? Right. I, I, I had a situation where, um, you know, if you don't have a will in New York, there are certain default people that inherit from you. And I had a married couple uh, with no children. The, the family came to me after they passed away. And but they passed away within a few weeks of each other. So by the def- they didn't have wills by the default rules. Everything went to the, sur- the second spouse who passed away. And then that whole estate went to that second spouse's family. So the, the, the you know, the, uh, the husband who passed away first, his family got, was going to get nothing, right? Because everything went to the survivor and the wife didn't have a will either. And so if you don't have a will, it just goes to your closest sibling relatives with some exceptions. So it went to all of her siblings and nieces and nephews. And I don't know if she wanted all of them to have it. And certainly it's, it was a mess not having a plan in place. Unintended consequences. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough for being here, sharing a little bit of your knowledge and expertise. And certainly I'm going to have all your information. It'll be up on our website, certainly out into our uh, social media and our mailings, but um, certainly well worth it. See a top professional for guidance and spring cleaning. I like that idea. Time to look at all your planning, make sure you're up to the minute, up to date. Uh, things going where they're supposed to, right? All right. And uh, thank you so much for having me on today. Thanks, Marcus.